Welcome to the Hearing Reviews webinar, Price Anchoring, What It Is and Why It Works, with Dr. Jill Caseworm. I'm Carl Strum, editor of the Hearing Review magazine and its website at hearingreview.com. This is the second of three webinars brought to you courtesy of CareCredit, focusing on improving your marketing and practice management. Today's webinar looks at the concept of price anchoring, how it is used effectively in other areas, and how Dr. Caseworm has been using it effectively in her practice. Our presenter, Dr. Jill Caseworm, is a well-known audiologist who has owned a very successful practice in St. Joseph, Michigan for over 30 years. In fact, although her practice is located in a town of only about 10,000 people, it has revenues that are over 10 times that of a typical practice in the United States. She's been a long-time contributor to articles in the Hearing Review and is widely hailed in the industry as someone who really knows how to market and build a practice. Today's presentation is brought to you by CareCredit, a health care credit card designed for patients' health, beauty, and wellness needs. It helps families access the care they need and want without delay or compromise. Approved patients with hearing problems can use it to pay for hearing tests, aids, and other preventive hearing devices they need to live their lives to the fullest. CareCredit is also offering at their 2015 IHS convention booth in Orlando a summary of Jill's presentations along with a special report and toolkit about the hearing industry and dispensing practice metrics. So if you're at IHS, be sure to stop by the CareCredit booth, that's booth 308, and pick these up. They'll also be offering a similar toolkit at the ADA convention in Washington, so stay tuned for that. As a matter of housekeeping in this webinar, you can email Jill and me questions via the Q&A box on the left or by using the email address shown at the end of this presentation. I'm also obligated to point out the standard ever-present legal disclaimer, which essentially says you are urged to consult with financial, legal, and other advisors relative to this content, and there's no implied liability for the use of the information provided. And with that, I'd like to welcome Dr. Jill Caseworm to today's Hearing Review webinar. Jill? Thank you, Carl, for that wonderful introduction. I'm so excited to be here today to present on the exciting topic of price anchoring. You may not have heard of it, but I can tell you, it's one of the few things in the 31 years I've been practicing that has made a huge impact on the business. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today, about price anchoring, what it is, and why it works. What is price anchoring? It's a way of strategically presenting information so that more patients will do what you want them to do. Patients typically purchase something based upon a comparison. They're comparing one thing to another. This principle is not new, actually, and the one that I use is based upon a book that was written by Dan Ariely called Predictably Irrational and talks about that patients aren't rational all the time. They do crazy things for no apparent reason, but they're predictable. And by using this method of pricing, you can be sure that more patients are going to do a predictable thing, which is to get the best technology. Now, obviously, you wouldn't recommend the best technology if you didn't really believe it, but sometimes it's just hard to find an easy way to present the information so that patients get what you're telling them and really do what you think is best for them. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about it, but it's a great way to increase the number of patients that get the best technology or the technology that's really best for their hearing loss and for them. Believe it or not, in most hearing health care practices, less than 50% of the patients that need hearing aids actually get them. So what that really means is typically we're not very successful at convincing patients to take our advice to get hearing aids. And there are some reasons for that. One of the reasons I think in having listened to quite a few students and, and other hearing health care professionals and in recording my own presentation is that typically we talk too much. I know that's the case for me. And if there's any kind of like quiet time, I get a little freaked out and I say, well, let's just do this because a half minute of silence usually seems like an hour. So this is a great way to present information so more than 50% of patients will take your advice. And I'll tell you what I've also found is that, first of all, you have to have a good definition of candidacy so it always is the same. So we, in my practice, consider that anyone with a hearing loss in two frequencies or more in one ear or both, or anyone who has AIDS over four years old is a candidate for new amplification. And then we track the number of people who are actually candidates versus the percentage of patients that actually take advantage of our technology and get new hearing aids or hearing aids. That's what we're looking at for this percentage. So the percentage of candidates that need it versus the percentage of candidates that buy it. 
and typically in most practices it's less than 50%. Now, in the average practice that does like $350,000 in gross revenue, changing this little less than 50% to 60% doing the same thing only slightly better so you convince more patients to take your advice, the average practice would pocket after cost of goods 80 extra thousand dollars a year. Now, who wouldn't like to do that, right? It can be a huge boon for business and also for you that you're helping more patients that need it. Most patients don't do something about their hearing loss for these reasons. I don't think it's bad enough. I want to think about it. They've already done that for eight years. I need to talk with my spouse or it's too much money. One thing we've found in our tested not sold surveys is that the number one reason patients don't do something about their hearing loss is because of price or money. My friends at Care Credit have done a great job of doing some research on this, and they found out why that's such a big objection to getting hearing aids. Because patients, because they are expensive and a luxury item for some patients, they don't do something about their problem because it's like sacrificing. It means giving up something else to be able to get hearing aids. Or perhaps they have too much debt. It means they have to wait before they save the money. That's why financing is so important. Financing makes a huge difference whether patients will take your advice today. And I know in my practice that if patients don't take my advice today, 96% of them are never coming back. I got that one opportunity, and if I miss it, they're never coming back. They may go down the street in two weeks to someone who does offer financing or can convince them to do something about their hearing problem, but your opportunity is now. Offering financing is a great way to overcome that number one objection of price or the expense of hearing aids. Care Credit also found out in their recent research that many patients don't buy because they don't have insurance coverage. You know, hearing aids are health care, and patients feel that health care should be covered by their insurance. So when it's not covered by insurance, it's a big obstacle. Most people just don't have four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 just sitting around waiting to be spent. So being able to take that expense and stretching it over perhaps 12, even 18 months with no interest is a huge motivator to patients. And not only is it a motivator, they'll end up buying better technology because they have the financing option. Recent research by Care Credit also suggested that many patients feel that they have to budget for something as expensive as hearing aids. So when they find out that they're four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000, even three for that amount, they say, you know what, I better wait on that. I better wait until I can afford it. I better wait until I can budget for it because they are expensive, but if they can pay over time, it makes it much more affordable. It makes it easier to put into their budget when they're only paying maybe $100, $200, or maybe even $500 if they're paying it off in a short period of time. So offering that financing can go a long way to overcoming the number one objection. So once you've overcome those objections, it's presenting the information in a manner that patients can understand and that they can easily compare. I know in my practice, in 20 years, my average selling price hadn't changed. It just wouldn't move no matter what I did. It always stayed about the same. And for whatever reason, we have this good, better, best approach to presenting the options in hearing health care. I don't know where it came from. But I had always done it, and I know many others had too, that it was three levels evenly spaced apart. So it was $8.99, $9.99, $10.99, or $25.99. $35.99, $45.99, whatever it might be, it doesn't matter. It's that they're equally spaced apart. Well, as Dan Ariely says in his book, Predictably Irrational, if you present things in this manner, three levels equally spaced apart, patients will predictably go to the middle, and that's exactly what was happening in my practice for 20 years. Patients would say, you know what, I don't want to be cheap. I don't want to take the cheapest thing, but I don't think I really need the best. You know, I don't live that active of a life, or I'm not with people that much. I'm not in meetings anymore. So they always went to the middle. And that, I have found, was because of the way I had presented that information. Once I changed the way I presented that information to patients based upon this price anchoring concept, my ASP went up right away. It was amazing. And I'll tell you some ways that that happened. This is just one example of the good, better, best approach these aren't actual prices, but this is how it's often done with a price anchoring or predictably irrational approach. What you're going to do to take advantage of this type of pricing 
is you are going to take your middle price and make it the same price as your best technology. Your middle price and make it the same price as your best technology. Now, I've had um, colleagues ask me, how does that work, Jill? I mean, how does that work with your margins? I can't afford to make less on the hearing aids. Well, in fact, you're not. What you're doing is you're raising the price of your middle technology. You're keeping the price of the good and the best exactly the same. And I'll go another step further here in just a minute about how adding something else free to the best really makes patients look at things a little bit differently. One thing that Dan Ariely found, and he did many years of research, was that giving away something free makes patients do crazy patients, not even patients, people, do crazy things. The power of free. He used an approach and did some test marketing on this concept with a magazine subscription. So consumers had the option of choosing a print version for, let's say, $49.99 for a year, an online version for $79.99 a year, or an online and a print version for $79.99 for a year. Now, patients said that and went, wow, I get two for the price of one. And they started looking at things just a little bit differently. And they said, you know what? It only makes sense that why shouldn't I get both? Now, think about it. Why would anybody need two versions of the same print magazine or the same magazine? People wouldn't. But because they thought they were getting so much more for their money, better value, they went ahead and went to the top. And what Dan found was that if he had priced those three options equally apart, people would have predictably gone to the middle. But instead, when he put more value on the best and patients thought and they had something to compare it to, most importantly, when they thought they had something much better for the same amount of money, which was both versions of the magazine, they went to the top overwhelmingly. You know, the power of free makes people do crazy things. I was just shopping recently, no surprise to most people that know me, and I was in the makeup department, and they said, you know, if you spend 15 more dollars, you get this nice little bag with all these free samples in it. And you get that for free if you spend 15 more dollars. Now, when you take time to really think about that, it's crazy because, in fact, I'm still spending 15 more dollars to get little samples. I mean, I remember the day when you went to a makeup counter and your bag was full of free samples, really for free. But now they came up with the concept that if you're offering somebody something extra, more value, they will predictably spend more money, and that's exactly what people do in our profession as well. So let me go back and revisit one more time this good, better, best presented with price anchoring in that type of format. These are not my prices. It's just an example so you can really look at them, okay? And if anybody wants an exact example of what we use, they can write to me at the end, and I'm happy to share it with you, as long as you're not across the street from me or anything. But... So you take the bottom level, which in this case is $59.90 a pair. You take the better technology at $64.90 a pair. And the best technology is also $64.90 a pair. But then you use and employ that power of free. So that now the best technology is not only the same price as the middle, but now you get free batteries or an extra year warranty included. So people go, wow, it just takes that bottom level and the mid-level out of play because now they're not even looking at the bottom. They're only comparing the better and the best. And they're saying, well, that's kind of crazy. Why wouldn't I get the best? And I get something else with it. So it makes the value of the best look so much better. Now, sometimes this is referred to as decoy pricing, but there's nothing decoying about it. It's just presenting things in a manner to make patients look at the options a little bit differently so that they take advantage of the best technology because they truly believe that it's a better value. Now, one of my patients who was 92, 93 years old came in, and I told him, you know, he knew he needed better hearing aids and new hearing aids. And so I gave him the options, and he said, okay, I'm going to get the middle one. And I said, but George, you can get the best for the same price and get an extra year warranty. Because I know that. I said, well, why wouldn't you want to do that then? It's the same price. He said, 
Because I'm 93, Jill, that extra year is not going to mean anything to me. Just give me the middle. Crazy? Yes. Irrational? Yes. Does it work? All the time. Have, have it proven not only with myself, it's been used all over the world, and it's proven that with this approach, more people will go to the best technology, which we know in the majority of cases is also the best for the patient. And so let's say somebody like George went to the middle. The only thing that that does is my margins are higher on the middle. So if he really chose that, it's not hurting my business in any way. It's just his choice. So, yes, it's irrational, but if you use this approach, I can guarantee that it will make a difference. And like I said, my average selling price hasn't changed, hadn't changed before this strategy in 20 years. And now I'm going to show you it did. When I went to this anchor pricing strategy, my ASP for the first time in 20 years went up over $400 a unit. Now, can I tell you what that does for business? Not to mention what I'm going to tell you in a minute, what it's done for patients, but it was a huge boon to business because now my ASP had gone up over $400. Now, just imagine, that's one. So when you add that for a pair, it's huge in business, and it works. It's just all a matter of presenting it. So what do you do when somebody says to you, well, how can that be, Jill? How can you afford to offer the better technology at the same price as the best, and then for the best, give me something else free. Now, believe it or not, the way that we do this is we have a sheet that lists our good, better, best with the prices and the benefits and the features. We don't focus much on the feature. We focus on the benefits. But we just tell the patient what we recommend and why. We give them a good, strong recommendation. Many times that help rate of less than 50% is that way because we give patients too many options. Hearing Industries Association did a survey a few years ago and asked patients what they wanted and expected from their hearing health care professionals, and what they found was that patients want a strong recommendation. I was just with a young person recently, and I heard them make their presentation to the patient on what they should do about their hearing loss, and they're like, well, you could do this, or you could do a little, you could do a remote control, or you could do a streamer for your TV, or better yet, if you have an iPhone, you could do this, and by the end, I was so confused. I would have walked out without doing anything because they had given me way too many options. We need to give a firm recommendation, and then we need to be quiet, which in my case, as you can imagine, is very difficult. But we need to just put the information in front of the patient, give them what we recommend and why. Patients want a strong recommendation, and they also want good reasons why they should do that and why they should spend their money on that. And then we need to sit back and be quiet, which can be very difficult like I said, 30 minutes, 30 seconds, I'm sorry, can seem like an hour. And then let the patient ask questions, answer their questions, know the answers, know why you're recommending what you're recommending, and most patients will take advantage. But it really does make a difference when you present the option this way. Now, I know what patients say. Nobody wants to really change the way they present their information. They're comfortable with it. Patients say, well, you know, is this really going to negatively impact if I don't give patients all these options? Is it going to negatively impact what they decide to do? Or how many will decide to do nothing because I gave them these higher-priced options? All I can tell you is that in my practice, we target a help rate of 80%, and we reach that almost every month. And if you target it, and if you present information in this way, it will also improve your help rate, which is the percentage of patients that need hearing aids, versus the percentage of patients that buy hearing aids. If you present it in this way and give them good reasons, a strong recommendation, and reasons why they should do that, they will take advantage of your advice. You'll not only find your average selling price going up, but you'll also you'll find your help rate going up as well, which is good for you and good for patients because who else is better to help them than you? I also have people say, well, Jill, we know you do this, but you live in Jillville, and we know how fancy your office is. Yes. That top left picture is my office. That's my front desk. And yes, we have a very unique and a very sophisticated patient environment. We also offer the best technology and a service lab and things that go with that. But I'm in a town of 10,000 people, and the town next door, those are the other pictures you see. Benton Harbor, Michigan has the highest poverty rate. It has a high crime rate. So I don't live in some utopia. I live in middle-class America. And people are taking advantage of this type of pricing structure. They are taking advantage of the benefits of better hearing. 
in spite of the fact that the town next door is a very low socioeconomic status. So it works. You just have to try it and give it a chance. What it's also done for business is that our patient referrals are up. I told you that almost 70% of our new business is coming from patients referring their friends, their relatives. Our returns for credit are down 1%. That's what we focus on is to have 1%, no more than 1% returns for credit. And our patient satisfaction is up. 98% of our patients, as tracked by our patient satisfaction surveys that we send to patients, 98% of our patients say that they would recommend us and better hearing to their friends, their relatives, and to other people that they know. So not only does this approach work, it convinces more patients to get advice, but it convinces more patients to get the best technology, which we know results in better patient satisfaction, better hearing. Overwhelmingly, patients are coming in today saying, I love my hearing aids. They're not perfect. I still have a hearing loss, but I appreciate what they do for me, and I would recommend you and better hearing to other patients. Does it get any better than that? So please take advantage and really try to utilize the anchor pricing strategy. If you need more information, these are some ways that you can contact me. You may know that I have a strong presence on social media. I have a weekly blog at drjill.com. You can tweet at Jill Caseworm, Facebook drjill.com, or email me. I have examples, and I am happy to share those with you on this great pricing strategy that really does work. I hope you'll take advantage of that. I also hope you'll offer financing to your patients because trust me, when it comes to making a decision and a decision that costs this type of money, it really does help to offer some financing to your patients. I want to thank Carl again, the great people at Hearing Review, and also my wonderful friends at Care Credit for allowing me to do this seminar, and I hope all of you will take advantage of this and will stay in touch. Thanks. Thank you, Jill. That was terrific information. If you have questions for Dr. Caseworm, you can email her at the email address shown here. As I mentioned before, CareCredit is also offering a free toolkit, as well as a summary of the information contained in this webinar at its booth, booth number 308, at the 2015 IHS convention in Orlando. So please stop by and pick up this material if you're attending the convention. They will also be offering a different series of webinars and the toolkit in advance of the 2015 ADA convention, so stay tuned for that. I'd like to thank Dr. Jill Caseworm and Care Credit for their participation in this webinar, and also Hearing Review staff members Dana McLean, Courtney Riley, and Ashley Lawson for their help in producing it. For the Hearing Review, I'm Carl Strum. Thanks for watching.